like to uh, go to the next presentation, and it is Machine Voting, the Bulgarian Experience. So Alex Stanov is the CTO of Information Services for JSC, and uh, been a software developer starting in the late 90s for a wide variety of projects from specialized hardware drivers to large-scale information citizens for private and public sectors, including e-government services, elections management, and smart cities. And uh, so since 2003, Alex has been a leading computer processing of all election results and referendum projects in Bulgaria. So we're going to learn what goes on in other parts of the world as well. And as a consultant for the Central Election Commission of Bulgaria, Alex is the primary author of technical and security requirements for election machines used in Bulgaria. So welcome Alex to the stage. Thank you all. I'm happy to see so many interesting uh, faces uh, for the processes in Bulgaria. I hope uh, we can share some ideas, problems, and solutions. So uh, we already know that uh, my uh, background is uh, IT technical background. I've been uh, for many years a software developer, then project manager. Then uh, I have some uh, IT security and penetration testing background. And in the end, I had to lead the technical side of uh, computer processing of the results. So this uh, put me in some uh, unique situation where I know IT and I know the election uh, processes in Bulgaria. So uh, this was uh, very interesting. Of course, I'm doing a lot of stuff. And as you can see here, my GitHub, uh, you can see the other things because this talk is uh, a bit different from my other talks here in uh, that corner of Black Hat, which are more technical ones. So first let's start a bit about Bulgaria. It's a country here in Eastern Europe. It's part of European uh, Union. We have a population of 7 million people and uh, it's the size about of uh, Nevada. So what you're seeing here can be uh, safely transferred like uh, just one state here in the U.S. So we have uh, 265 municipalities where they do different kind of elections, and we have around uh, 12,000 um, polling stations. Uh, naturally, we have uh, elections for pres president, for our national parliament, EU parliament, since, uh, uh, since 2007 we are a member of EU, and we have local elections. This year, we already had as other uh, European countries uh, elections uh, for European Parliament, and uh, in just a couple of months, we'll have uh, local elections, which are way more difficult than others. So let's first start how we vote now, and uh, what are the processes here, how we put there the machine voting. So generally speaking, you see uh, two ballots. The first one is just majority uh, candidates. This is a ballot for president, I think. And you have here the party, you have the person, the candidate. And you just have to scratch with X or V uh, the um, chosen candidate. On the other part, on the other side, you have uh, the preferential ballot where you first choose the uh, party and after that you give a preference to chosen from your candidate via these circles here. And if the candidate uh, collects enough votes, he can push and be elected if this party Gets, uh, if this party gets um, enough results, yeah, and puts, this can go here. And this uh, generally um, is a good thing because it allows for another majority, but it's uh, highly um, 
um, sophisticates and uh, makes uh, non-trivial the processing of the results. So when people vote in the E-Day, in the end, the polling station uh, members can count in the ballots, the paper ballots, and they fill a uh, polling station protocol with the results. This is how it looks like, the, just the first pages. Uh, this protocol looks pretty clean, but in reality, we receive this. <laughs> you see a lot of scratches, a lot of corrections here, and in the end you don't know what exactly happened in that section. Of course, uh, uh, if we are not so sure what happens, they open the bags with the ballots, recount, and etc. So, uh, putting machines in this equation. All voting machines are offline. We don't have uh, online machines, as in most states, uh, as I understood. When the, uh, so, uh, when the voter goes in the polling station, he can decide if we will vote by paper ballot or on the machine. And after that, they fill the protocol with, and the results are written from the machine on the USB drive. And this is uh, where it gets really crazy. So the polling station members have to sum by hand the results from the machine with the results on the paper voting, and they have to put it on these protocols. After that, all this is transferred from polling station to IT centers where the data from the, these uh, paper protocols are entered by op operators. In fact, we have two stages of data entry. On the left, you see where the polling station members go and uh, go with the USB drives from the machines and uh, with the protocols and give, the, give them to operators. They do first entry. After that, in separate IT center, deployed on different place, it's re-entered again. So you can catch the eventual discrepancies between those both databases. This is a lot of hard work, which uh, sometimes uh, happens uh, for about 72 hours. In the e-voting in Bulgaria, uh, we in Bulgaria uh, very much uh, like and love to do experiments with different things. So back in 2009, we have uh, these uh, machines. You can see here the uh, magnetic stripe card reader, the touch screen, and I don't know why, but they put uh, two UPS devices because uh, to have power is uh, really a paramount. So uh, the good thing was that uh, this happened only in nine polling stations uh, from, you remember, uh, 12,000. Uh, and we didn't have uh, two big problems with uh, this. After that, we continued with the experiments and Back in uh, 2014, we did it with 100 uh, polling stations and machines, then with 300. And if you can see there, we fall to 50 because from this, uh, they started to use the results, not just as experiment, but we use the results for, for real. This was the machine back then that we're using. And uh, maybe the important thing here is that Bulgarian government decided not to buy these machines, but every time we uh, rent it, we lend it. Because uh, they are not so sure who can keep it, who, who can uh, keep them. Uh, will they be needed if there is a legislation change? Because 
uh, all these were experiments, and et cetera, et cetera. So, from the experiment, what we know with this kind of machines, the first version were uh, uh, installed with outdated uh, Windows XP. Uh, when somebody screamed about that, uh, they put it Windows 7. Um, the uh, way that the machine is activated to allow somebody to vote was with, you see this uh, cable here, on the other end, you have just a button which is uh, unlocked, which is uh, pressed by the polling station uh, officer, and the machine unlocks. So, no other way. The problem here, yes, the machine uh, prints paper slips, and you uh, pass these slips here. So you have paper audited uh, trail. Of course, we have the slips, but uh, we didn't have uh, the legislation that requires to, uh, those slips to be counted. So, of course, we never counted. But yeah, we have the trail. There were some issues with uh, missing, uh, missing flash drives, and of course, uh, very low uh, machine voting usage because uh, generally uh, the campaign. Uh, uh, had to be in a very narrow uh, time, and uh, nobody understood that if we, if we can u uh, use the machines at all. And of course, there were some polling stations where the uh, machines were not powered on. So, in the beginning of uh, 2019, uh, the Central Election Commission um, tasked me to uh, draft uh, new requ requirements for the machines because uh, most of the people understood that uh, uh, this is a problem, the way we're doing it, and uh, we have to have something uh, more current against current threats. So in the requirements, we put uh, very strict hardware and crypto algorithm requirements. We put that uh, the machine can't have any external communication interfaces, so the air gap uh, principle will be kept. We required to have a secure boot, so we know that nobody changed the machine in transit. We required a full disk encryption, of course, against this tampering again. We put very hard requirements about what should be in the OS image, what drivers, um, what components uh, should be stripped. So we have... Uh, I'll get to that. <laughs> because we're still on the stage of uh, requirements. After that, uh, the uh, guys who Lent the machines have to do a certificate authority and the own initialization data about uh, the um, candidates, about the parties, must be signed and the machine have to decline to vote, uh, to refuse to vote uh, on signed data. And in the end, uh, we have uh, activation with smart cards to control and three voters are seen here. So when the uh, voter uh, decides to vote, he gets one voter card. It can uh, unlock the machine and vote with, with, with it. The vote uh, must be signed the electronic ballot with this smart card. After that, he returns this card. And uh, the next voter can vote only with one of the first two cards. So they rotate, and we avoid uh, this interesting button that uh, you saw on the previous machine. Of course, uh, the usual uh, requirements for VVPAT uh, slips counting, a very detailed uh, voting process uh, descriptions that have to be implemented uh, are also in place. Uh, 
we wanted to see the code and we had uh, requirements about uh, unit tests that uh, have to be uh, uh, covered, the coverage of uh, testing and etc. All the things that we are doing when we are developing, uh, trying to develop a high quality and secure information systems were in place. So, what happened? Because th those machines were rented again, they came with uh, Ubuntu Linux. Uh, of course, they were smart card activ activated with external uh, batteries. Here is the smart card reader, and here is the printout for the results. As you see, it has uh, places for physical clips where you can uh, clip it with uh, tamper evident um, things, and uh, this is how the machine works. The problem that we had here was that uh, nobody uh, wanted from the government institutions to audit if these machines really adhere to the requirements. So the vendor says, yes, they are fully compliant by the requirements, but we didn't have somebody to check that. But uh, the, all it was uh, we were obligated to do, and we took the team from Bulgarian Academy of Science and uh, uh, Sofia University, and under the supervision of Central Election Commission, they did some audit, which is classified. We haven't seen that. And they said, we are good. So what happened? just several months ago, back in May. We landed the machines again, this time 3,000 machines. No audit, the time frame for the project because of those high requirements was very narrow. And it was uh, practically impossible to do it, the audit in proper way. A lot of polling station workers missed the training and didn't know how to work with this machine. And uh, we went into a coordination hell, basically, between different institutions that have to deal with these machines and their physical and logical protection. Some statistics from 23 machines from 3,000. Uh, we missed the results data. Uh, just 26% of the voters used the machines, despite the previous several experiments. On, yeah. 26% of those who voted. I have to check, but it's not really uh, important how many, 100 or 1,000, uh, it's just a percentage. Uh, generally in Bulgaria we have a uh, high uh, percent of um, voters' activity. Of course, it's a uh, war on EU elections, but yeah, it was uh, nothing different from other ways. So 5% uh, of the machines weren't used at all, and in 10% uh, of the machines, less than 10 people voted on the machines. Because remember, you can choose to vote on the machine or to vote on, uh, with paper. So we detected a lot of human errors because we uh, take the polling station protocol and we take the USB data from the machines, and in about 2.6% of the polling stations, you had more votes uh, received from the machine than uh, summing in cup from those on the machine and the paper. I'm not sure if I <laughs> uh, said it correctly, but uh, this is really a big problem. 
from the preferences that you uh, see, uh, we detected errors in about uh, 40 percent, which is really high. Why that happened? You see this paper slip. It uh, comes around here. <laughs> so the uh, polling station officers have to uh, read this and to sum it by hand with the paper ones and to put it in polling station protocol. And this is uh, very, very error prone to as, as we saw it. Just for information, the project cost was about uh, 5.1 million US dollars, which was the lending of the machines and services that Algeria received. The aftermath from this is, uh, was a, a very wide political and media debate about what, the, uh, if we should continue with the machine voting. There were a lot of concerns about the security, the results accuracy, and of course the price of the, this machine voting. In the meantime of this debate, on 15th of July, it just a month from today back, we have the largest up-to-date personal data leak in Bulgaria. Somebody uh, hacked the machine in our national revenue agency and pulled a lot of personal data of uh, Bulgarian citizens. Of course, uh, on, the, on this debate, uh, it uh, gets a bit negative about uh, machine voting because uh, you can protect it, uh, the National Revenue Agency, how you will protect the machine voting, etc., etc. And on 3rd of July, just half a month back, we, have, uh, we had the legislation uh, changed. We will not have machine voting on upcoming local elections, which are to be held in October this year. But, but for all other elections after this, we will use only machines in polling stations with our 200 voters. So go figure, I really, for myself, I don't know how this was decided in the end. <laughs> but yeah. And that's, that's all. <laughs> yes? Yeah, so when you had the total vote sum be absurdly large, was that because of uh, double voting or double count? Mm, uh, total votes for a vote. the problem that the total number of votes was more than the, the ballots plus the machine mm -hmm. thing. So that obviously a problem, but was it because something was counted twice or was it because some people were able to vote twice? No, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not concerning uh, double voting. There were no double voting. It was just a human error when you sum the result from this long paper slip with the results from the uh, ballot box. And they have to write it on this protocol. And those are about uh, uh, 3,200 uh, numbers that you have to sum. And of course, humans made mistakes. Yes? Please. Those? Uh, next few years. So you said you're missing results from 23 machines. Mm -hmm. um, how, many, how many voters did that account for? Were they at high voting districts? Or? Well, in, uh, those were uh, missing in uh, 23 machines, which means uh, 23 polling stations. In our uh, legislation, we can't have a polling station with more than 1,000 voters. At, this is uh, tops. And when I say missing results, we have a paper uh, protocol from this uh, polling station, which says that uh, there was a voting there. But uh, for some reason, which can be, uh, they can't find the, couldn't find the USB flash drive. The USB flash drive can be read uh, 
after that, or some other issues. We just don't have the data from the machines. But um, I don't think that uh, for these uh, uh, 23 polling stations, uh, a lot of people use the machines anyway. Some of those were uh, part of those that uh, were not used at all. Yes, please. No, there is no EU regulation on using a voting machine. Uh, there are some just uh, very broad uh, requirements about uh, voting process, but every country in the EU decides uh, by itself uh, how uh, it will uh, vote and uh, what uh, processes and mechanisms will have. Uh, we have a bit more um, complex requirements uh, concerning the EU elections, which are held uh, in all Europe uh, for one week, but um, generally uh, this is up to every country to decide. Please. Did you say that the, uh, the low usage of the uh, machines in, in these elections, was that due to uh, lack of voter trust in the machines as opposed to the uh, well, we're not sure because there was not any extensive uh, research on that uh, part. And uh, the politics uh, like to dribble with that if the machine voting is secure or not. Uh, of course, uh, half of the parties uh, want machine voting, other half uh, say this is fault and we don't have to use it. Uh, so uh, it's different. It's really different. Uh, we have some parts of the country where uh, we have very high usage of the machine voting, so it's not uh, uh, evenly distributed uh, everywhere. But in some other places, uh, we have really small awareness of that. Yes, please. Uh, well, the requirements says that uh, the, we have to uh, have a paper audit trail and uh, all the data that comes on the USB drive from the machines have to be signed with uh, these smart cards with, of course, uh, the certificate. And the smart cards have to be transported by different means, not uh, with the machines uh, in conflict, but from different people, yes, from different teams. Um, all this is in the requirements, but we really don't know, or at least I don't know, because I haven't uh, been everywhere, and uh, of course uh, haven't uh, did the audit, and I don't know the audit results, then uh, that is always okay, but uh, I believe uh, these controls were in place. I hope these controls were in place. Yeah, always connected, yeah. yeah. Sorry, please. Leading up to your elections, is there any sort of advertising that uh, you guys do for your citizens to say, hey, we have voting machines in these areas, we want paper ballot or not? Because I know it said, there's only, you said, like, as you, uh, on one of your slides, there was only like 300 uh, money machines available in one particular area, or even like a couple of areas. So, do you, what advertising do you do to tell them that's actually? 
Okay, people can't uh, vote where they uh, decide. They have to vote in the polling station that uh, they can vote. And uh, where will be the machines is decided by the Central Election Commission. So uh, you can uh, choose, and in most cases, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, use the machine when you go to vote, not before that. So is it explained to them like when they go to vote at that time, like a uh, option? This must be done by the, po the polling station members. And, and is that standard? Maybe or? not. Each one comes up with their own little, like, hey. Yes, there was a campaign about that. So, okay, sorry guys. Uh, if there are more questions, I'll be on the back. Thank you very much.